Uh, my name is Lloyd Bird. I'm the Vice President of Application Development and Technical Solutions for Convergis. And my responsibility are really the whole application set for the company, those that are running in contact centers, those are running in our corporate um, uh, corporate support systems as well, along with technical solutioning for our customers. Maybe just to share a couple of things about Convergis uh, to put it into context. We're greater than 115,000 employees. Uh, we're a worldwide company. We're in customer care outsourcing. We're the number two customer care outsourcing company in the world. We service greater than 50% of the Fortune 500 in our customer base, 58 languages, uh, nearly three billion in revenue, and uh, a lot of contacts, eight billion contacts a year. So you already start to see big numbers coming into play, especially around employees and around customer interactions. That plays into our journey to um, GDPR. In EMEA specifically, so when we say GDPR, we're really talking about global, but what really, really got us going in terms of developing a strategy was EU GDPR and having to solve for the EU uh, directive uh, th that came out. And there were 43 locations, 15 countries, 32 languages, close to 20,000 employees across EMEA not all of those in the EU, some of those in uh, Tunisia and Cairo and in nearshore uh, EMEA footprints, but all servicing EU customers and the EU customer base. And with that, we had a large amount of um, considerations to figure out what to do. So about, I guess, May of 2017, about a year before the directive was gonna go in place, we really started kind of hunkering down to figure out what we were gonna do and how we were gonna do it uh, in order to, um, to satisfy the directives that were coming out. So with that, we, we, we kind of started from a consultancy perspective and said, what are all the things that we need to look at when we're thinking about GDPR and in specifically, in this case, EU GDPR? And we came across eight. We, had to, we knew we had to get with our compliance team, we had to get policies and procedures and all of those things kind of lined up. But we also knew that uh, we were gonna have to get a number of uh, IT uh, procedures and policies directly aligned, including uh, some governance uh, processes that we were working with clients. All of our systems have access controls, they all had backup policies, backup uh, uh, retention um, uh, def definitions, et cetera, but some of those didn't match what were needed for EU GDPR. And we had to get, uh, just to make sure all of our processes and change and so forth were lined up. The tough ones came around encryption, around data at rest, uh, around data masking, and then probably the toughest came around with the, which really is the key to it all, how are you actually gonna do data subject writers request across all your systems? So we fundamentally came out of this period of May to September-ish of, of 2017 with a realization that we didn't have any good ways to handle data subject request. We're still a little fuzzy about what we needed to do and we didn't have a real good way of discovering all of that information as well. So we probably started getting a little nervous about that time. Um, so that got us to September of 2017. We're sitting there looking at the clock and the calendar. We're like eight months to go live. We've been thinking about some things and some ideas, including graph technology of using that because the problems was starting to get you know, very, very multidimensional, a lot of, uh, of, of, of data in, in various sources and so forth. So we started scoping. And we, we started by looking across our application set. We had 120 apps that we really needed to look at. Some of those were things we built, some were hybrid, some were third party apps. And uh, we needed to look at those. Um, 
we had a whole bunch of internal collaboration and storage um, uh, things to look at. That included email systems, included email back to clients, included internal email, SharePoint. Uh, you know, on, we had SharePoint on-prem, we had share drives, just to give you a sense of context, we had eight terabyte of SharePoint uh, to look at in this particular context. So that added more pieces to it. Uh, certainly we had data centers to think about, we had backup storage to think about, infrastructure pieces that we had to look at. And then there were all of these operational parameters that started to emerge. 106 customers across that EMEA footprint. Uh, when you really look at pieces of customer business, not just customers, we'll call those lines of business, that number gets up closer to four to 500 unique pieces of business, large pieces of business with customers across 32 languages, 15 countries, 43 sites, and 19,000 employees. So throw in some contracts, throw in some regulations, all those bubbles start to look like things that could be connected with graph technology. And so we more and more were thinking that some other method that we had used traditionally was gonna make sense in trying to figure out all the interconnectivity of this data. And, and that was kind of our, our, I think, aha moment was at that point around September of last year that we said we gotta figure out a, a new way of, of thinking about this. It took us four months to analyze this data just to get up a, a good handle on what some of these relationships were. So we had originally thought, okay, we're gonna build, okay? Because we like to build things. So we were gonna build and we have a development organization, uh, even if we're gonna use new technology around graph uh, technology, we were gonna build it ourselves. We kind of looked out on the market. We couldn't really find anything. We had some big box companies that were coming to us and say, we'll consult with you and charge you a whole bunch of money and then we can together figure out what needs to be done. But not really a solution. So that didn't feel right. And it, it, it really did seem like at this point, everybody was trying to figure out this problem on their own and in parallel to each other and Everybody was kind of designing as we were going. So we started looking at, okay, what, even building graph models, and I'll show you some here in a minute, uh, of what the data would look like and so forth. And, uh, and we started looking at the tough stuff, what I'll call the tough stuff. And that especially was finding data that was non-structured. So we, we got pretty good handle on our applications. We got a pretty good handle on our, our, our data warehousing, on our uh, kind of key systems and where the data are. We use what's called a global operating model. So we don't have a lot of variation from region to region. We have a good amount of consistency. But the unstructured data was, was throwing us for a bit of a loop in terms of how do we find uh, customers that might be in that unstructured data or employees since the regulation hit employees as well. Then it was what are we going to do with these data subject right actions. There's eight listed there of different things you have to do. It's not just, uh, you know, erase data. You know, you got to be able to at least report on it. You've got to be able to um, uh, at least disclose it. In some cases it goes all the way to erasure but, but other kind of pieces in between. Reporting and compliance was gonna be a bit of a problem for us because we'd have to build some UI to capture these requests for data subject rights. We have to report back in the manner that the EU said you have to report back on these uh, particular things. We didn't have any of that. We were gonna to have to build that. Uh, it was something that was kind of looming out there. And then there was all these apps. And I'll go into some architecture here in a minute, our enterprise architecture, but we were gonna to have to change all those apps and there's one problem with all of these apps. These apps were all built to put data in records at a time. None of these apps were built to take data out records at a time and um, or manipulate uh, individual records within these apps. And so even though we had a good handle on them, technically we didn't have a good way to address this uh, problem. So here we got the issue of finding it and we got the issue to what to do on the back end to try to deal with. 
So our beginning state was we have a whole bunch of these, these systems. Um, they're, they, they actually are connected very well, especially to data warehouse structures, to uh, kind of key systems and so forth. But most of the interfaces were built point to point as well. It was making our challenge just a little bit more difficult as, as we were going. There was some data replication that was happening across some of the systems that we had to account for and figure out what, what to do. It was gonna be expensive. As we started to estimate, we actually went through an estimation effort of what it would take to, to make changes to all these systems. The number was coming up and it was much too big. So we knew we had an in-state desire, which was get to more of a kind of enterprise bus type of capability um, to, um, you know, you see graph in here that was in our, our kind of in-state uh, design structure that we were kind of coming up with, along with uh, some better capability of making changes to these um, changes to these systems. But we had a lot of work ahead of us in order to try to figure out how to get there. So started to build a graph, right? We said, okay, if we're going to do GDPR, we got to have compliance, we got to have employees, we got to have applications, we got to have infrastructure. Uh, stuff from Active Directory, et cetera, and we started to build that and started the modeling process for it. And, uh, you know, that first slide I showed you with all of the kind of interrelationships, we started to build that. And that, that is a small version of what the real one actually looks like as it's got grown as more and more parameters were coming into play. But that's where we were thinking we were going to do as we were thinking about building it. So, um, that gets us to this event one year ago. And we were invited to come up. We were, again, really thinking about how to use it in this context. We were also thinking about ID management and some other areas, but we hadn't pulled the trigger yet in terms of what we were gonna do. So we come to this event and this, actually, this, uh, this is my big plug for this event. This event one year ago was really, really important for us and saved our bacon in some respects in terms of um, the amount of work that we were gonna do and different approaches that we had. So in that, we came up with, well, there are better integration layers with connectors out there. There's better discovery capabilities out there. Um, base reporting, uh, looking at automation versus manual and trying to define some sort of threshold and some prioritization. So what we really found was there actually is an ecosystem around graph as well, and we started to tap into it. And with that, we, we started working with Focal Point, which was a consulting company that we got real refined in terms of what we needed to do and what we didn't need to do. And we met a company here called Clued In. Uh, Tim Ward, stand up back here. Tim's the founder of Clued In. So Clued In's a company out of Denmark, and uh, they use graph technology and other technology and they had been doing a lot of work around data and data management, and they were much further along in that, in that context of solving EU GDPR problems and some of the pieces that were kind of wrapped around our problem set that they had kind of already solved for that would help us move along a lot faster. So we decided to partner with them, and. Uh, with Neo4j, of course, we ran, we're running this on Amazon Cloud Services so we could stand it up fast and so forth. And so in a matter of, what, months, I guess, really, a matter of a couple months after this event, all that structure was kind of done, settled in place, and we're up and running on a project where we now have a, a kind of a, 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 a target, an approach to get there. So what we implemented, was this GDPR management system along with, with Clued In. Uh, Riza Khan here, Riza, stand up, raise your hand. Riza's our uh, chief enterprise architect, so uh, anything that got built, he's really the one that built it, not me. Um, so uh, we worked with, uh, with Clued In, with Neo4j, with Amazon to stand up this environment where we could have connectors into our application set so that we solve this problem, not trying to write code into every application. We wrote it using this connector approach. Uh, we used the enterprise service bus uh, concept as well that was kind of directionally where we wanted to head. 
And then the clued in technology that they had built was sitting there and they had wrappered, wrappered around that some um, UI to handle the specific EU GDPR reporting and, uh, and some of the things that were very unique to EU GDPR. And then at the heart, or within the, 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 the main part of the clued in uh, system is a graph database where we're taking all these particular pieces and so forth. So as you can imagine, lots of ingestion occurring when you look across those shared sites, across the SharePoint sites, across the mail and so forth. Um, we, we built the connectors with the most critical apps and the apps that we felt had the most data associated with it was potentially um, had some sort of uh, compliance issue at hand. Uh, we ranked every app from the 120 into I think three or four tiers we implemented a certain set of the tiers and the rest we said, you know what, for those we'll leave manual, we'll come back later, uh, we'll look at building uh, connectors for those at some point and some are just, quite frankly, they're not worth it, right? They're, they're, the, the amount of data that's in those applications would be so small, it's not worth the overhead of building the connector, we'll just deal with those manually if we get those. But for the most part, everything kind of ran through this, uh, including, I mean, big systems like HR systems and our warehouses as well, kind of feeding in through it. Vision, from a visionary perspective, we wanted to not think of EU GDPR, we wanted to think of GDPR, global. I showed that graphic of us 115,000 uh, employees. Well, the Philippines is, has a, already a GDPR regulation. It's not quite as stiff as what the EU is in terms of a penalty perspective. Colombia has issued GDPR regulation. What we see is more and more countries are probably going to be adding these types of regulations. And in theory, every country can write their own law, all right? And we've even had one major client uh, a, a top uh, Fortune 50 client that said, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna write our own requirements, layer it over top of the GDPR requirements, the comp country regulations that are published, add a few little bells and whistles of our own to that. So now not only do you have the possibility of every country writing regulation, you also have every client that can put their own spin on it from a contract perspective as well. That's a lot of permutations when you start thinking about uh, regulation and how to handle it. So our vision, kind of from the beginning, we knew we had to solve for EU first, but we wanted to really think about this in terms of a global perspective, not just an EU perspective. So the technology that we chose and the architecture that we chose fits well with that. We can expand that out as the regulation um, continues to go and adapt for those client overlays as well. Um, so as we're doing that, we're enriching our data, we're adding more, uh, we'll add more regional apps, we'll add you know, these tier two apps as we need to as, they, as um, regulation continues to grow. And over time, we wanna actually take what are called data maps, which uh, are a, a kind of a, a regulatory piece of what you have to do to, to show that you've got all this stuff mapped. We're gonna convert that and put that into, um, into graph form as well. So we've got a little bit more work to do. Um, so we've been collecting a bunch of information along with GDPR at the same time, which will get a little bit into where we headed. So we've got 535,000 persons worth of information. We collect multiple years, all turnover over the years, uh, 28,000 projects worth of data, 2,300 uh, specific clients. That's kind of at that line of business level if you want to think about it that way. And, and you can see 567,000 worth of, uh, in this case, data points that we can find interesting relationships. And, and that's just getting started because that doesn't have any operational results tied to it. That's just information at this point, which is, which is pretty valuable. So it, it kind of gets to where are we at and, and what do we have on the horizon in addition to our GDPR approach. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this about Convergys, but we're, we're pending an acquisition, uh, Cinex Corporation, and their um, kind of version of us, customer care outsourcing company, Concentrix, 
um, is uh, currently in a process of acquiring Convergys. So the last public release that came out for that said it would happen in fourth quarter, probably early fourth quarter, that that should close and we'll be one company at that point. Well, guess what? 120,000 employees now becomes 220,000 employees. Every one of those data points that we talked about in terms of um, uh, being able to graph and be able to look at relationships almost doubled in, in terms of, of scope. So the, the opportunity for us uh, is, is tremendous, I think, in terms of this. Even just looking at integration opportunities and are there areas where we can kind of leverage just from an integration perspective. On our own and kind of combined with the larger company, we've been looking a lot at uh, data and how to drive operational improvement and operational efficiency. So the data that we've already been kind of collecting in this knowledge graph, we want to start adding more operational results to it as well. Think of, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take an operational result down at a real fine-tuned la uh, layer. Let's say we have a problem with tardiness. Okay, in a region of the world. Being able to associate tardiness results to people, to supervisors, to clients, to sites, the regions, to management, to how are operating results for that client in general, what are the overall trends for that client in terms of tardiness, et cetera, and being able to kind of merge that operational data and to drive uh, some operational analytics that can also be performance-based uh, operational results as well. So we're looking to take and expand uh, these data sources that we have in order to drive more operational analytics. We do a lot of RPA work, robotics process automation, where we're trying to drive uh, through, through RPA uh, improvements in a client's operations. Well, a lot of that discovery work associated with RPA is manual. It's based upon uh, knowledge that particular operations people have or that IT analysts can go in and be able to find and so forth in order to, operate, uh, to, to initiate what might be operational improvements. What we want to get is more and more of this operational data to where we can have points to go in and look at and say these are areas where we should look at for RPA and have more of that kind of pre-discovery work automated. So that's another area for us. Log analysis, we got tons of log analysis that we're not getting any value out of uh, or very limited value. We think that's another uh, kind of opportunity area. Then some others, you know, we're, we're doing work around smart help, making good automated decisions off of chat, um, natural language and ML, kind of proof of concept activities going on, biometrics, especially facial bi biometrics and security solutions in general. So you'll see kind of I, I tried to list a few of the things that I thought connected data were really kind of tied to. Uh, large data loading, we're seeing some cases where 10x improvement over uh, previous um, uh, kind of models that we were looking at. So that's an area where we, we think we can get real good value. We talked about log analysis, employ, imp improving our knowledge graph. One area where the knowledge graph is, is that we got an interesting use case right now that we're kind of doubling down on is what do we really know about our clients? So we've got all of these data points around the company, especially a, a large customer that's operating on a global basis and so forth. And the way we actually get knowledge about our clients is pretty archaic, really, when you think about it. We only, we have a SharePoint site to have all these different data elements about a client. And if we get a new one, we add another column in the SharePoint site. If you want to think about it, we use salesforce.com which you know, is interesting, but not like super great in terms of being able to, to do, uh, you know, make discovery off of information around clients and so forth. So we think there's a value of information floating around the company that we can create some better leverage in terms of that information about clients. So that's another area, kind of along the knowledge graph con concept that we're looking at to, uh, to, uh, to improve. So picture-wise, we think all of this can kind of relate to each other. This is um, Reese's favorite graph, uh, where we can take the, the data, and we have a lot of data within the company, how we can do statistical analysis and reference off of that, 
how we can tie that into machine learning, how we can tie that into RPA, how we can tie that back into uh, 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 Omni-type uh, solutions that could help benefit our customers or at some point benefit our internal operations as well. We're just getting started. Um, but it's an interesting journey that we've kind of went through at this point, led by trying to figure out how to solve GDPR. So with that, that's all the material I have. Um, welcome, any questions, discussion? Yes. That, we kind of went in early on and said, we've got this big discovery problem that we've got to come out with. And we actually, this is an odd combination. We IT partnered with legal, right? We usually try to stay away from legal, right? But we partnered with legal and said, okay, if we're gonna go in and we've gotta do this discovery, because in some cases you're going into SharePoint sites, you're going into shared drives, you're trying to dissect business processes that are at the operational layer, and you're right, by your question, people don't really like you to do that and so forth. So we got enough momentum kind of started at the beginning that we didn't get a whole lot of resistance. Um, some, but not, not a whole lot. Any other questions? I would just encourage you all to, to on, on a parting point, um, I, I've been to a number of the different sessions around the day and there's, there's a common theme in every one of these discussions. And it's that most of us are at a point where we have a good use case or we're trying to fine tune a good use case to figure out how to use it. Pilots in this infrastructure are easy to stand up, very easy, and not cost prohibitive either. So it's easy to kind of take something, run with it, and in my opinion, eh, if you didn't, didn't go where you wanted it to go, scrap it, figure out another use case that might work for it and so forth. We've got a number of pilots underway. I think a couple of those are gonna materialize pretty well. Maybe not all of them, but pilots are easy to do. Uh, it's pretty easy to get started, started skill set wise around these projects as well. I'll just encourage everyone to do that, yes. of the graph, it's, the graph model itself. The graph itself, the, the graph itself that we're using for GDPR is include in. Okay, that graph is setting include in. Now Tim is gonna be speaking here at, right after I'm done, I think at four o'clock, over in one of the, the larger rooms. I would encourage you to go to his session because he's gonna actually dig into some ways that they're doing this at an underlying level. Uh, so I would encourage you to go to that session as well if you've got interest, and I think you'll get a, a lot more detail than I could possibly even answer kind of from that view, okay? All right, well thank you, appreciate it.